made us. He's the one that makes things happen in our life. Every author has a copyright. Jesus has a copyright over our lives because he's an author of our lives. And if you don't want to approach the author of life, you will not be able to discover your purpose. Your purpose can be discovered. Deuteronomy chapter 2. I read in verse 2 and 3. And the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have scattered this mountain long enough. Turn northward. You have scattered this mountain long enough. Turn northward. I'm reading Exodus chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 12. Exodus 33 from verse 12 to 15. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I find grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. And consider that this nation is your people. And, it, and the God said, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Um, we're going to read verse 15 together. All of us, let's go. Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. The message came precisely to the children of Israel. The Lord spoke to Moses. And Moses delivered the message to the people of God. God said in Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 2 and 3. You have scattered in this mountain long enough. Go northward. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6. The Lord said the same thing. He said, you have stayed long enough on this mountain. You have dwelt long enough on this mountain. He said, move northward. You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. The message is titled, Towards a Higher Ground. Towards a Higher Level. God wants to take you to a higher level. It is the will of God to take you to a higher level. Higher level spiritually, higher level physically. God wants to take you into the higher level. In spiritually, God wants to take you to the higher level. I remember in those days, I remember in 1991, 1992, 1993 to 1996. Whenever I have to preach, I will preach in my language and someone will interpret it for the church in English. It's not that I was not read. But I was not brought up in such a way. And that continued till I got to the United Kingdom in 1996. And when I got to 1996, I will preach, someone will interpret it. And God said to me that enough of this, enough of this, you don't know that you are now in another country. He said, if you go to Germany, does it mean that you will speak your language? Someone will now interpret it to English, another one will now interpret it to Germany, German. So how are you going to do so God wants you to increase. And I go, went before the Lord. It's not because I was not read. No, but because that's how I was brought up. We will be on the mountain. We pray. We pray in our language. So God now said to me, I've made you an international preacher. And you need to preach in the language, in English language. Everyone knew. When, uh, there was a time we held a crusade in my town, in the Shubal, or the state of Nigeria. One, there's a, one of uh, the great evangelists. We, were, we grew up together. I was an evangelist. There's been an evangelist when I was a prophet. He was remained an evangelist. But we used to go to the mountain together. So when we had a crusade, a crusade that's, because whenever we want to do crusade, all churches around, they close their church, they close their program, they come together as Christian Nation of Nigeria or PFN, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. So we see over 100,000 of people came to for our crusade. And the man said he would love to see me. Although there's so much protocol security because that's what the country, I got over the country. So he said, when he was saying, please tell him, 
I'm this, I'm this. So he knows me. So at the end of the day, when we finished, I saw him. He said, I just want to be so sure that it's you. What does it mean? Because he knew how we were before. He knew how we will be in the mountain. We will not have no money, nothing. When we want to break our fast, we have to get what they call coconuts. And we take gari. If I tell you, there might not be sugar in it. That's how we started with God. That's how we started with God. I just look at it that ah, uh -uh, just less than 10 years. So what, what is the secret behind it? It means that God does not stay in a place. God does not stay in the same level. God is God or that works in different dimension. God wants you to excel. Not in the way you started as a Christian that you are remaining today. And if you are remaining today, it means that you are not growing. It means that you are a creepy Christian. The will of God for every one of us is that we might excel. We might grow. We might move up. God wants you to move up towards a higher level. God wants you to go to a higher level. The Lord told the children of Israel, you have scattered long enough on this mountain. You have dwelt long enough on this mountain. Why should you be in the same level? Why should you be in the same way? Why are you still in the same place? Some people in the last five years, it's the same salary. It's the same money. Some people in the last five years, it's the same amount they save in the, in, on, in, uh, uh, every month. They are still saving. Some people in the last five years, they have never saved. Their account has never been balanced. And they feel like it's normal. It's not normal. That's not what God wants you to do. If you look at the life of the apostles of Jesus Christ, you will see that Jesus Christ, he gave them power. He released this power upon them. They started moving, they started moving. And I remember there was when Jesus was around, Mark 6, verse 13, and the apostle of Jesus Christ, they took the anointing oil. They anointed those who are sick and they healed them. So Jesus was giving them, he was, he was making them to grow to, so that they can move to the higher level. It was not how Peter started that he was after Jesus Christ had departed. This was Peter that who doesn't know anything. She didn't know anything. It was a stark illiterate. Illiterate. The Bible said in Acts of Apostles, chapter 4, in verse 13. He said, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and, and they perceived that they are all ignorant and untrained men, uneducated people. Yes. He said they marveled, but they realized that they had been with Jesus. When you are with Jesus Christ, he increases you. He increases you, he moves you forward. He makes you to excel. He makes you to be great. So the will of God for you and I today is that we might move to a higher level. God wants you to move to a higher level, a higher ground, towards a higher level, towards a higher ground. God said, you have scattered long enough on this mountain. You are just being in the same level. In the same level, in time of power, in terms of spiritual life. Some people, they can't pray more than five minutes. After five minutes, they don't know what to say anymore. Such a person needs to grow. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, in verse 11, Apostle Paul said, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I reasoned as a child. When I was a child, he said, I, 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 I spoke as a child, I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I become a man, I put away childish things. When I was a, I, I, I spoke like a child. Everyone need to grow. I've, I've held about three Sundays when I'm talking about spiritual growth. That everyone need to grow. So people, they cry. Whenever small thing, they cry. Little thing, they cry. That's not how God, yeah, we can cry, but not cry to God, don't cry to man. Cry to God. Towards a higher level. You are going to a higher level. You are moving to another level. So this is the word of Moses. When Moses was, he knew that they were going to the higher level. They've already left Egypt. They had already left Egypt. They have crossed the Red Sea. They have crossed the Red Sea. They were in the wilderness now. And they continued their journey. By that time, Moses was asking that we had already got the Ten Commandments. And he said, now we are moving from this level. We are going to another level. We are going to another city. We are, going to, we are moving forward so that we can possess our possessions. And he said, God, whom are you going to send to me? Who are you going to send to us? Who is taking us there? Who is taking us there? May I say this to you. Towards your higher level. 
towards your higher ground. You need, there's no one that says that doesn't need God. You need the presence of God. There's something that you need that is so important. Presence of God. Moses said, what who is going to lead us? Who will take us to the promised land that you are saying? He said, you said I found favor before you. But you have not shown me who will go with us. Who will take us there. And the Bible says, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. My presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Everybody needs to understand the meaning of presence of God. The presence of God is God himself. It is when God is in you. It is when God is present in you. The presence of God is when the Godhead, the Godhead, the three Godhead, when they are in you. The presence of God. When we talk about, when the presence of God comes upon you, it leads to anointing. Because anointing is the manifestation of the presence of God. When God is in you, you are anointed. Anointing is the presence, is the manifestation of the presence of God. When you are anointed, the presence of God is with you. When the presence of God comes upon you, what it does is to anoint you. Anoint you afresh. It gives you power. It gives you power. The power that created the heavens and the earth. The power that makes things happen. The Lord gives you that power. And that's why in John 14 verse 16, John 14 verse 26, John 15 verse 26, Acts of Apostles chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus Christ made them to understand that you shall, he said, I have not to tell you, but I will send the helper to you. I will send the promise of God to you. Acts 1 verse 8, he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The Holy Ghost comes upon you means that when the presence of God has come upon you, let me say this to you, when the presence of God is with you, you can never be defeated. When the presence of God with you, you are moved, you can move, you can move, you can move. And now, God, I have to summarize my word today, that why people remain in the same level is because they have not yet experienced the presence of God. God did not say, I will send some soldiers to you. God did not say, I will send some battalion to you. God did not say that. God did not say, oh, there's going to be some bulldozers that is going to go with you. But God said, my presence will go with you. My presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Oh, I wish every Christian in the, of nowadays could understand the meaning of presence of God. I, 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 I wish uh, everyone hearing my, fo- my, my voice, we understand what that presence stands for in our life. What it stands for. The presence of God. The presence of God is God himself. When God is with you, who is that person that can go against you? Romans 8 verse 31. That is what we are talking about, the presence of God. The presence of God is that God is with you. Who is that person that can stand against you? Who is that nation? Who is that person? Who is that power? And what is that power that can stand against you? Because we are talking about the presence of God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. In the book of, uh, I remember in the book of uh, Exodus, chapter 24, verse 17, Exodus 24, verse 17. The Bible said, the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire in the sight of the children of Israel. The glory of the Lord in the mountain. When God was on the mountain, there was a great earthquake. Yes, the presence of God was so heavy. It was like a consuming fire. It was like fire, fire that can consume. Consuming fire means that it's not fire that burns. There are so many ways by which fire operates. Fire can burn. And when it burns, when it burns, the person can still be alive or the person can die, but we can still see it. So the person, uh, that is, fire can burn. It's possible for fire to, fire can burn. Yes, sir. But let me tell you something. Fire can, when the fire, when fire can destroy, fire can also destroy. And when fire destroy, it means that that thing cannot work anymore. It destroys it. But when we say fire consumes, sir, when it consumes, uh, it means that there is nothing else remaining. It's over. It's over. Hebrews 11 verse 29. It, it said, our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming Hebrews 12 verse 29. Our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12 verse 29. Our God is a consuming fire. Consuming fire. The fire that consumes. 
The fire that comes, when something is consuming, that that thing is not existing anymore. It means that that thing is taken away. Our God is a consuming fire. And that is what he is. And that is what he is. And that is what he stands for. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. So today, what God is making you to understand today is that for you to move to the next level, you need him. Let me tell you some things. Maybe I can make some people uncomfortable this hour. What you can never have without God. Number one, there cannot be you without God. Your existence. There cannot be you, there cannot be me without God. There cannot be us without God. If I have to make you uncomfortable here, yes. The Bible said, Genesis 1, verse 26, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So God is the one who made us. So there cannot be you. Go. There cannot be you without God. He's the one who created us. He's the one who made us. Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created, created the heavens and the earth. So, there cannot be you without, there cannot be you without God. There cannot be me without God. Number two, what you cannot have is that your continuous existence can never happen without him. Even if you are created, Yes, he created you, and after he has created you, he said you don't need God anymore. You may die. Yes, your continuous existence is because he has made it so. He has made it so. Your continuous existence is because he has made it happen. So without, that's why Jesus Christ said, John chapter 15, verse 5, John first of chapter 15, verse 6, he said in the same way that in separating yourself from me, you can do nothing. Without me, yet we are the branches, is the vine. Without him, we cannot be anything. There is nothing we can become without him. He is the Lord. He makes things happen. He, if he does not make things happen, we will have been dead today. Jesus said, John 9, verse 5, As long as I am in this world, I am the light of the world. He is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. John 8, verse 12, he said, whoever follows me, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. So, you're, you, it cannot, there cannot be you without God. And even after he created you, if you want to turn out away, you, your continuous existence is because of God. Otherwise, you would have been known. Number three, the victory, you can never be victorious without God. I've never seen anyone who fought the battle and won the battle without God. The Bible made us understand, John 3, verse 27, for we know nobody can receive anything unless it has been granted from heaven. God is the one that makes this happen. Without him, there is, can never be victory. You cannot be victorious without him. Oh, I can't victory over my enemies. I can't victory over everything. Revelation 12, verse 11 says, and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the, by the word of their testimonies. So if the blood of the Lamb was not shed, there can never be victory. There can never be victory. There can never be victory. Victory happens because he has made it happen. On the cross, John 19, verse 30, he said, it is finished. That's when he gave us victory. It is finished. That's when he gave us victory. Jesus gave us victory. So you cannot be victorious without him. May I say something else? Maybe you won't be able to understand number four. You can never be any peace without him. You can never be at peace. You have any peace? We have peace now. You have peace. You may not have money, but you have peace. There can never be peace. There can never be healing. There can never be good health. There can never be good life without him. There can never be peace. There can never be peace. Ephesians 2 verse 14. He said, for you, for he himself is our peace who has made both one and he has broken down the middle wall of separation. Jesus is our peace. In Isaiah 9, verse 6, he said, his name shall be wonderful, wonderful, counselor, mighty God, yes, everlasting father, the prince of peace. If Jesus does not give us peace, we can never have peace. He's the one who authorized, authorized peace for us. He has authorized peace for you, and he is, because he himself is peace. His name is peace. If I have to tell you, number five, there cannot be blessing without him. There cannot be blessing. God said in the book of uh, 
Ezekiel 34, verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. I will make them and the people around my hills a blessing. I will cause showers to come down in their season. And there shall be showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. Showers of blessing takes place because God makes it. He said, I will, I will bring showers. I will bring showers. He's the one who said it. I will bring showers. This Romans 28, verse 12. This Romans 28, verse 13. He said, it will cause showers to come down in their season. It will cause showers to come down. He said, you will have rain. It will bring rain to you. He said, you shall learn to benefit. You shall not borrow. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. So your blessing today is because of, because he makes it happen. And let me just summarize everything in five. The message is that whatever you have today is God. Whatever you are today, whatever I am today is God. There's one song the will sing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Whatever I am now, it is by your grace. If he is not there, we are not there. If he's not there, he has taken you to that side. He is the one that's taking you far. You know, when you look at yourself, oh God, you have not done this. God says, I've done so much in your life. Who can buy life? Who can buy life? Let me tell you, yesterday was Saturday. Who is the person that can buy life? Money cannot be exchanged with life. Billionaires died. Oh, billionaires died. They could have given, they could have offered money to to, to, to spirit of death. But spirit of death will tell you, I don't need your money. God has kept you alive. Yesterday, they buried so many people across the world. Today, they are still burying so many. As we are here, some people are in the, they are in the cemetery. Some people are in the grave by the grave side. Yes, what are they doing? They are burying but oh, God has kept you alive. There is a reason why he has kept you alive. And there is a reason. There is a reason. There is a reason why he has kept you alive. And that's the reason why the Bible said in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, remember the Lord your God now, it's not in the time of your youth. Remember him. Remember the Lord your God. Yes, it's not, it's not because of my background that I am what I am today. It's not because I'm better than others. Not because of my righteousness, not because of my, oh my God, not because of my, my, my faithfulness, not because of my holiness. Because of this, I am nothing, I am zero when we talk about that. Because the Bible said, there is no one man righteous, not one. There is no one righteous. There is no one. If I said I'm righteous, I'm not. No, no one does good. No one, no one is righteous. The word of God is clearly and plainly stated. There is no one righteous, no, not one. Psalm 14, verse 3. Psalm 53, verse 3. Even in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 12, he made us understand there is nothing, no one, no one is righteous. No. In Romans 3, verse 23, he said, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All, everyone has sinned. All have sinned and fall short of the glory. All. Oh, no single person is righteous before God. So it means that it's not my righteousness, but it's the grace of God. So if that gives you must remember the Lord. God tell you that you are you am taking you to the next level. And the next and the higher ground that you are going, he said, I will, my presence will go with you. 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 The presence of God will go with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today is the last Sunday in the month of February. And as you are going to the next month, uh, the presence of God will go with you. His presence will go with you. He will take you to the next month. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, he will make that month a month of joy, a month of happiness, uh, a month of breakthrough, a month of blessing, a month of favor, a month of accomplishment. Receive it! In the name of Jesus Christ. It's going to be a month of peace. It's going to be a month of joy. It's going to be a month of blessing. It's going to be a month that you have never seen. It's going to be a month that is full of testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the choir, receive it over there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it, receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it in Jesus' name. In the congregation, receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone listening and hearing our voice. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Whom is going with us? God said, I'm not sending any other person. 
I myself will go with you. I my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. My presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. My presence will go with you. The presence of God will go with you. Oh, you have interviewed this week. The presence of God will go with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You who have some things to sort out. The presence of God will go with you. And it will give you rest. You that are traveling from one city to another. From one country to another. The presence of God will go with you. And it will give you rest. His presence will go with you. In the name of Jesus. Christ, you that are taking some steps, uh, some steps of faith, uh, as you are going taking the step of faith, his presence will go with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Made us is the one that makes things happen in our life. Every author has a copyright. Jesus has a copyright over our lives because he's an author of our lives. And if you don't approach the author of life, you will not be able to discover your purpose. Your purpose can be discovered.